to comment, if you want to comment and criticize, at least you must be knowing who Bharadwaja was and what is the level of Bharadwaja. If it is not there, you can say that irrelevant is correct. If that is irrelevant to you, in which you have no connection, that absurdity is something which is non-parliamentary. Because that is a different type of mode of approach which cannot be subjected to mere material devices such as microscope. Even you know that what you see from a microscope, you cannot have it from a telescope. There are several scopes of vision. To see something very small is microscopic vision. To see something very broad is macroscopic vision. To see something which is subtle is infrascopic vision. To see something, something which is great and something which is very, very complicated, that is ultrascopic vision. And to see something which is hidden is known as penetropic vision. And to see something that is very deep is abyscopic vision. To see something that is beyond the reach of one's own uh, visibility is known as telescopic vision. To see something that is beyond the material bondage, space and time control, that is periscopic vision. Can you see a star or comet in a microscope? Likewise, even in within the science, one device cannot be held as responsible for a clear vision of the second one. How you can deal with something which is far beyond the scope of reachability of material science? Whatever you have taken is out of your reach. Then I told the second statement, which was very much... Uh, embedded with uh, humor rather than knowledge. I told that taking Vaimanika Shastra into consideration by IAS is just like taking CNRS Das, uh, he has written some books, that for recitation in temples. <laughs> These things are entirely different. We can say that it is irrelevant, that is out of our subject. So, different levels of vision is there. That's why I told Vedic vision is entirely different and it is not a source of knowledge, not only a source of knowledge, but a way of life. It is uh, rather with experience than being merely empirical and by, by something biblio oriented. It is a way of life. You have to practice what you are told. There are two types of practices which we used to say. For example, something you can do in experience, something you cannot do unless you experience. See, how can you learn swimming in the floor and then go to water? Unless you jump inside and learn in a very limited water, then you can gradually promote yourself to swim in torrential flow of water fields. That's fine. So, it is something which is based on one's own belief, sincerity, and the other major pillars of rectifying your action of pursuit into Vedic knowledge. So, I told that mere Vedic knowledge, Vedic management is entirely different because those seers managed with a paramaterial skill which is out of their celibacy erudition, realization and ritual principles which if unless then you cannot get the same benefit. So taking that into consideration is different. Whereas the simplified forms of Vedas such as the economics and other diplomacy and the other derivative sciences which I have told, it is meant for common people because these things are done by diplomats and erudite scholars. Scholars are different from CS. CS are persons, those who have seen and persons are just scholars who just narrate the experiences of somebody who has seen. You see, opinions are different from decisions. And consideration is entirely different from truth. So Vedas are something which we call as Swata Pramana, I have already told. It is self-axiomatic. So I have suggested to take into wisdom for the second reason also. Somebody told that they are interested in life after death. I don't know whether they asked the experience or explanation. No, they were, they were very much interested in that. And somebody told that they are going to invite some people from oceanography. You see, I want this session to be very practical. So many people are expecting so many things. First, let me, as the managing director, director and founder of this trust, I want to explain why this interaction has been made. Interaction, it is entirely different from the position of an Acharya's explanation. Interaction, the word itself means that both of us participate together. Inculcation, initiation is an area in which a person is predominant and one poor person is subservient. And slavery, you know that one person is very predominant and other person is totally, blindly, inanimately he is submissive. So there are so many levels which even that nomenclature will define the role of the person at the two ends. Interaction it deals with two different persons with different fields working for a common purpose for achieving a common goal. That is interaction. 
I have already made it is interaction. There may be questions and answers, but it is not only traffic. I may also ask you questions. <laughs> First, let me clarify the reason for which this session has been here called for. You know that the trustee is planning to conduct lots of seminars this year. I don't know, I have easily forgotten. I have got the boon to forget normal things. Before four or five months, I was the chief guest in the International Seminar for Cybernetics, Informatics and uh, Systemics. Three days seminar in which so many people participated from Australia, France, Germany. They thought that I may give some blessing or something in the form of Sanskrit, but uh, for their astonishment or shock, <laughs> I started the same cybernetics on that day. They were very much interested and they are conducting a second session, including also artificial intelligence and robotics. So it is a sanctification vitalization of knowledge, not saffronization or secularization of knowledge. You have to understand this. Then I have been invited now by the Brain Research Institute to conduct a seminar February first week at Bangalore about uh, brain, mind and consciousness and about legal restrictions and Vedic injunctions. We are conducting on Nirnita, that is on uh, Law Research Council. We are conducting some seminars. So, for taking this into consideration, I want a lot of personalities to be included so that for our seminars, for contribution of articles, for participation and for a joint venture with our trust in making the attempts of the trust to be tremendously successful along with the idea of promoting their projects or their involvements so that trust is also in interested in doing some projects. So it is a mutual benefit scheme under which I have invited these people. Certainly it will include question or answer clarifications. There are several types of approaches. See, generally knowledge, it gets revealed by various circumstances. One is aspirant, the person who wants to know. And second is a person skeptic, is always doubtful. And third is antagonist, who is always against it. Stalwart, a person who is knowledgeable, vichakshana, we say in Sanskrit. There are four types of people. If you see an aspirant, quarter of your knowledge is revealed. If the same person is doubtful, to clarify his doubt, you have to expand your knowledge to half the level. Then still more a quarter is added, if the person is a great knowledgeable person, and under his shadow, spontaneously there will be an outburst. There may be also sabhakampa, some phobia, that is different. Generally. With the, under the shadow of the stalwarts, we get some speech. And if a person is totally against it, antagonist, we get it fully.